Hi there everyone, you might remember a little while back we had a video with the BBC Micro and we interviewed a physicist called Dr Richard Hill and he showed us a game he made when he was a boy. He made it himself and even now, all these years later, he's still tweaking with it. At the end of that video, I asked you guys, the viewers, if you'd been working on anything recently or maybe back in your earlier days of programming, I asked you to send it in so that Sean, who makes the computer file videos behind the camera there, so he could have a look at it. And you sent loads in, like I think it's well over a hundred have been sent in and Sean's been wasting a lot of time playing them when he should be making computer file videos. We don't know much about what you've sent us, you know, if anyone's trying to take us for a ride and has sent us some famous game from the 1990s, we might not know, but we're doing our best to check and if anyone's being naughty, I'm sure the rest of you will point out in the comments as well. So let's have a look. Now this has been sent in by, I think it's Tajay or Tajai, I'm sorry I don't know how to pronounce your name. If we click on the options, you see here we can adjust the level size, field of view and the sensitivity. But let's go back and have a look at the game because I'm sure that's what you all want to see. I'm going to click play. Let's go! Okay, so a pretty familiar Mario. There's that traditional kind of Mario looking uh, format for a 2D game, but we're playing down here in a three-dimensional world. If I move the mouse, I can change the perspective. And then here by using the arrow keys, I can go forward, back, left, right, and spacebar to do Mario's usual jumps. And that's how you die. I'm not very good at this yet, but I am, I am quite enjoying it. Sometimes you're watching the 2D and sometimes you're watching the first person and your brain kind of fries and sometimes you go left and right instead of forward and back. But anyway, these are first world problems, aren't they? Oh. I was playing it quite well a few minutes ago when Sean was on the phone. Here's one of these baddies. What are, I, don't, I don't know what these guys are called. I'm sure you all do and you'll all give me a hard time for not knowing. These little mushroom like men. Now I didn't realise this, but there is like a whole kind of world of these Mario fan-made games. Look at this, I'm going to finish this level. Very good, very impressive. Let's have a look at something else. Okay, now we have a contribution here from 18-year-old Andro from Croatia who sent us a bunch of programs. We're just going to have a look at one of them. And this is a horror game that Sean tells me is kind of doom-like. Oh, it just made a sound behind me. Is this part of the game? I hear a phone ringing. I don't know if I'm supposed to... Oh, hang on. Look at this. It is doom-like. And there's a phone on the table. There's my feet. I can look at my own feet. Okay, so now I'm using the arrow keys to walk around. And then a hand's come on the screen so I can answer the phone, presumably. I'm going to press that. Weather forecast for tonight. Dark with a chance of pain. Dark with a chance of pain. I'm not sure I'm going to go out in that kind of weather, but let's have a little... Well, that foreboding warning. Oh, look, there's my shadow being cast. You can see that the lamp is casting my own shadow onto the onto the floor. Okay, I've opened a door. Ah! <laughs> wow. I had a, uh, a scary monster jump out at me from behind the door. I think I handled it well. A lesser man may have made a scary, girly noise like, ah! But that's exactly what I did. <laughs> and like most of the time when I play these games, I spend most of the time just like staring at walls like this. But that's, that's more to do with my ineptitude than anything. Obviously I could sit here and play this all day and that would be a little uninteresting for you. But I am impressed by this and for one person to make this um, really impresses me. I have to look, I want to look behind another door. I think we should crack on and really I'm worried I'm going to open another door and get scared and make another really embarrassing noise. 18 year old Mohammed has sent us this one. He's from Birmingham, just down the road from us. It's a Java game. And it hasn't been given a name yet, so maybe you guys are going to come up with a name for it. And I'm being told the reason it hasn't got a name is there's not much to do. But it has got a multiplayer feature, so I don't know, so I guess you can have multiplayers with not much to do. But uh, let's have a look. I'm being asked to enter a name. I will enter my name, Brady. So there we have a little character with my name above it. 
using the arrows, I can move my little Brady around the screen. It's very cute. There's some kind of brown case or container or box. I don't know how to interact with that just yet. When we asked everybody to send in these games, we should have also asked them to send in instructions of how to play the games. We, we didn't think of that. Look, I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk out this door and see if I can walk into that water. Oh, you can! Look! Up to my neck. Wow. I can remember a time, not as long ago as I'd like to admit, when that would have just blown me away. It, it still kind of does. I'm going to try and switch on the music now at Sean's recommendation. You are about to turn on music can be very loud. Do we do it? Oh yeah, that's adding a real, uh, a real ambience, a certain atmosphere to the whole thing now. It's completely changed the game. So has anyone come up with a name for the game yet? Maybe Muhammad was right, you know. Maybe there's not a whole lot to do. It's still quite nice. This box seems to be the key to everything. I must know what's inside this box. It's like the, it's like the case in Pulp Fiction now. I, I, I have to know. Now we've got Air Master from Carl in Sweden. And Carl sent us all the code and everything. And apparently he's made everything here. The art, the code of course, the music. Not the sound effects though. I think his friend made the sound effects for him. But uh, Sean said it was one of his favourites. So let's have a look and see what it's like. I like the name. Here we go. That looks pretty cool. I'm seen looking down into some kind of canyon here. And I'm going to choose stage zero. Obviously written by a computer programmer starting with zero. Hello computer file. <laughs> Press space to continue. This level doesn't contain much, but in future it's going to be the tutorial level. Be prepared for a big jump in difficulty between this level and the next level. Hint, press U to level up your weapon. So if I press space, I seem to be able to fire these little... Oh yeah. Did I die? I died. I don't know how I died. Or maybe it's just next, next level. Whoa, whoa. He wasn't kidding about a jump up in difficulty. <laughs> It's insane! This is um, quite cool. What's that one? 1942? It reminds me a bit of that, you know, real classic feel to it. Well, well done, Carl. I can see why you've uh, managed to distract Sean with your game. It's really... oh, okay. Oh, okay, yeah. I've, I've beefed up my weapon a bit now. Oh, so those are, those are bad things. <laughs> I saw these green orbs on the screen and I thought, oh brilliant, I'm going to grab one of them. Turns out that was actually enemy fire. It's a learning curve. This is probably a good game to end this video on because it's pretty cool. And I think we might be playing this one for a while. But, if anyone else out there wants to send us any programs they've made, any games, anything they want us to have a look at and feature here, we'll happily do more. We've already got a load more that Sean's wading his way through, so if you've already sent something, we haven't forgotten about it. But if you've been inspired by some of this and want to send us something, please do.